Hey, buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to show you how to plot position, velocity, and acceleration using MATLAB. Now where I teach in the School of Engineering Technology at Purdue, we have our students draw something called a motion diagram. And let me draw one out for you so you can kind of see where we're going here. Now you start out with this kind of ladder looking thing that's actually three sets of axes plotted or set one right on top of the other. It looks like this. Let's sketch this out for you. Okay, looks like that. Where this is acceleration, this is in meters per second squared. This is position, or I'm sorry, velocity in meters per second. And this is position in meters. And then we have time down here. And this is in seconds. Okay, remember we're using base units in the metric system. So let's just take the simplest example. Let's say we had a constant acceleration say you dropped a heavy object like a golf ball or something just a little bit so aerodynamic drag doesn't matter that would be G so we'd say put a zero there and 9.81 there now we always track units units are over here I haven't ignored them now height here equals slope there because we're integrating to go from here to here and then integrating again to go from here to here so what's a curve that has a constant slope well it looks like a straight line so the slope here would also be 9.81 and for just to make this easy let's make this one second all right so the height here is the area there so that right there is a1 well 9.81 meters per second squared times one second gives you 9.81 and then the last thing would be position now I have to we got some cross hatches there for you. Now I need a curve down here that has a constantly increasing slope. Well, that's a parabola. You integrate a straight line or a curve a line with a slope, you get a parabola. So this is what a motion diagram looks like. We can do this in MATLAB. I mean, you can do it in, by hand if, the, if this is easy enough. It, this doesn't have to get very complicated before drawing the rest of this is difficult. And even if you don't draw things as a motion diagram in any dynamics class in the universe, you still got to do this. So let's uh, formalize the process. Let me lay the process out for you so you can draw something like this or you can do your homework no matter what acceleration is. And MATLAB is a great tool for that. So let me erase this and then we'll get started. Okay, let's start with an acceleration. Now the first thing we're going to need is some expression for acceleration. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to say acceleration is e to the minus 0.5t, or if you want to write it in a slightly different way, it's e to the minus 1 half t, or t over 2. All right, now this makes sense because there are lots of situations in which initial acceleration would be high and then it slows down as, as velocity pick up, picks up. That happens all the time. So in a car or something, acceleration might be high at you know, close to zero speed. And as you get up, uh, speed increases, drag and rolling resistance increase, the acceleration would drop off. So this is pretty representative. Well, if, if we're going to integrate from acceleration to velocity and velocity to position, it would kind of help to know what the uh, integral of an e to the minus 0.5t is. So let's fix that. So integral of e to the at dt now, e to the at, where a is just some number, a can be anything, is 1 over a e to the at plus c. So let's put that over here. We'll need that here in a minute. Now, let's figure out velocity. So velocity is integral from 0 to t of acceleration. All right, we know what that is. Okay, let's, that's this expression right here. So I'm going to replace that with e to the minus 0.5t dt. Okay, now notice I've got a number down here in the lower uh, integration limit and just t in the upper limit. Can you put t there? You know, you don't see that in calculus class very often. Usually it's a number. Well, I want this to be a function, not a number, so I'm going to leave t up there. Now remember, math doesn't care. Math doesn't care whether t is just a variable or a number. It'll be a number eventually, but math doesn't care. I'm not violating any rule there. 
Okay, I can I can make this tea if I want. Totally cool. So let's do this. Let's see, it looks like minus two, because right here A is minus 0.5 or minus one half. One over A right there is going to be minus two. So that's where that comes from. E to the minus 0 0.5 T from zero. Now I need, I'm going to leave a T there. There we go. All right, so far so good. That's a that's kind of a rough looking T. That's, that's a little better. Let's just keep going. Let's just do what the math says. Minus, minus two e to the, now this is minus 0 0.5 times zero. Right, again, I'm just doing what, you know, running through the, the, the process for integration. I'm just doing what calculus says. Well, that's that, that uh, exponent up there is gonna be zero. What's e to the zero? One, what's anything to the zero? One. Okay, so that becomes one. There's a minus and a minus. So this is gonna become minus two e to the minus 0 0.5 t plus two. Okay, now, gonna run out of room on this board, even though it's a pretty big board. Let's take this and put it right there, okay? Now, we're gonna calculate position the exact same way. We had to integrate to go from, let's see, did I get this on the screen? Yeah, I guess you can see that. So integrate to go from acceleration to velocity. I'm gonna integrate again to go from velocity to position. This is just basic dynamics. Okay, so I gotta go from zero to t again, minus two e to the 0 0.5 t plus two, whoops, whack it, that's terrible. Okay, let's do that. Now I'm gonna grab my cheat sheet here and I'm gonna just write this integral out to keep, keep the uh, video going here. All right, and this turns out to be, let's see, 4e to the minus 0 0.5t plus 2t minus 4. All right. So we've all seen this before. This is so easy a professor can do it. Now, since we've got all these expressions, it's time to go into MATLAB. Now, what we've done here is we've integrated by hand. I wanted, I wanted you to see how this works. So when the, the expressions show up in a minute here on MATLAB, you're gonna know where they came from. Let me erase this, and we gotta, we gotta plot out the path here. So hang on a second, I gotta understand where we're going in MATLAB. Plotting in MATLAB's pretty easy, but you have to have something to plot, obviously. So we've got three choices here. We can, in, we can uh, calculate velocity and acceleration, or velocity and position from acceleration by hand, which is what we just did, or we can use the symbolic processor, well, okay, okay. use the symbolic processor in MATLAB to do that for us, or we can do it numerically. we're actually just calculating a bunch of numbers and plotting lists of numbers. All right, so those are our three choices. We've already done the legwork for this. I'll show you how to do this and we're probably gonna stick with this, all right? So let's go to MATLAB now on my computer and finish the, the task here. Okay, here we are in MATLAB and it's got all the windows on the screen that you'd normally see. Here's the current folder, so this is where I am on my E drive, and there's the file that I, I used. That's the uh, video for me standing at the board just just now. Workspace is empty, so there's nothing in memory, and there's no command history. I uh, can deleted that before we started. So let's start by doing everything in symbolics. MATLAB has a symbolic processor in it, and symbolics means that you're pushing around letters, not numbers. In MATLAB, you have to identify your symbolic variables before you start working with them. So let's do that. You type in S, Y, M, S, and then just list out your variables. So A, V, uh, let's see, X, and T. Those are the variables we're gonna be using symbolically. So there they are. And you can see over here, there they are in workspace. So we've got them. And 
let's start by assigning or defining acceleration. Whoops, there we go. Now in MATLAB, e to the x is called exponential, and it's exp, so there's exp to the minus 0.5t. Let's go ahead and hit return, and there it is. Well, MATLAB knows how to integrate, so let's just do that. v is the integral of a from, now I'm going to put a square bracket here, and I'm going to tell it, I want to integrate from 0 to t. That's what this little thing right here means. Those square brackets indicate a vector. MATLAB really likes to think in terms of vectors. In fact, MATLAB is matrix laboratory, where the name originally came from. And so I'm going to integrate, and I've got a vector that assigns my upper and lower limits, so it's 0 and t. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit return, and there it is. We saw that before. Well, if it worked once, let's do it again. Hit return. Well, we've seen that before. So we've calculated velocity and position from acceleration. Now it's time to plot it. MATLAB plots symbolic variables using a different command than numerical variables. So the plot command for symbolics is called fplot. So let's go ahead and type that in. But before we do that, I want to plot position, velocity, and acceleration all on the same figure, three different axes on the same figure. Well, those different axes are called subplots. And so what I can actually do here, I'm going to type in the word subplot space 311. What this means is, I'm, I'm going to have three plots. There's going to be three rows, one column, and I want to start with the first one. That'll be at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And there it is. This is going to be kind of difficult to work with on the screen like this, so let me move some things around. There. Now we have all the plots uh, available to us on the screen here. So subplot 311 means three rows, one column. So I'm going to have one, two, three here. And I'm going to start on the first plot. So that's when, this one right here. So let's do this now. Let's say F plot. Now I want to do acceleration from zero. Let's make it two. Let's, let's go from a time of zero seconds to two seconds. And there it is. Well, it would be nice if we had a grid on there. So let's type in grid. Oh, there's the grid. Okay. Now, I need to know what the vertical axis is here. So I'm going to say Y label. And that's going to be acceleration in meters, oops, meters per second squared. Now what's going on here? Y label says I'm going to label the Y axis. And everything in between these two single quotes there is is text. So I'm just going to hit return and there it is. You see it right there. We can move this around if we want later. Well it worked once. Let's do it again. But I need to, need to start on a second plot. So 3, 1, 2. So 3 rows, 1 column, second plot. There it is. And let's just pull that up again. I'm hitting the up arrow here to get this. And let's instead of A, let's have V. There it is again. Let's type in the grid again. And Y label, label, is velocity. Now it's just in meters per second. There's that. Let's go to the third plot. And just do the same thing again. position. There. Turn the grid on. There we are. Now on this one I really do want an X label. So there's time. And there we go. We've got it. There's the motion diagram. Nice and clean. If you want to save this plot over here you can go over here and say save as 
and you can pick all kinds of formats here. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, if you pick TIFF, it doesn't compress, or it, it compresses, but it compresses in a lossless way. So TIFF will give you nice crisp edges. JPEG is small, but the more you compress, the fuzzier the edges are get. So anyway, play around with those and pick whichever ones you want. Now the last way to do this is numerically, where we're going to go ahead and crank out numbers for acceleration rather than a, a, a function. And we're going to work directly with lists of numbers. That's working numerically. So let's delete this. We'll rebuild it here in a minute. Put that back there for now. And let's, let's clear everything. So we're going to clear. That got rid of everything in the workspace. And this is going to be a distraction. So maybe I'll get rid of that too. Right click there and clear command history. Are you sure? Yeah, let's go ahead. Last thing I want to do is clear the command window, so I tip in CLC. Now, let's, this is math, MATLAB classic now is basically what we're doing. So let's define a vector of t's from 0 to 2. Well, if I do that, I'm only going to get 0, 1, 2. That's a pretty rough looking plot. So let's maybe step this in steps of 0.1. Okay, right now I've got a vector in steps of 0.1. I'm thinking maybe that's not enough. Let's make this 0.5. All right, hit return. Oh, what happened there? Well, I didn't put the semicolon at the end of the line, so it echoed everything to the screen. Well, that's not good. So let me pull this up again. I just hit up arrow twice to get to there. See that semicolon? There, now it doesn't echo everything to the screen. So let's see. Steps of 05 to 2. It seems like that ought to be 20 numbers, or 40 numbers. You can see over here it's actually 41. And the reason it's 41, remember there's a 0 there. So let's make acceleration. Minus 0 0.5 times t. Whoops. There we go. That's better. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the semicolon there. So now I've got A and T. Now I need to type in V, and I can either type it in directly or I can have it calculate a finite difference derivative. To keep this simple, I'm going to go ahead and just type in the expression we had before. Okay, there's velocity, and one last time, let's do this for position. All right, so now you can see I've got all the vectors I need, and I'm going to go ahead and just do that subplot thing again. There that is. Once again, let me clean this up a little bit so we can see everything at once. Okay, so there. And now instead of fplot, I'll just use the plot command, and I need the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. And I'm going to turn the grid on. Now note that I don't have to tell it what range over which I want to plot. It's going to figure that out automatically. So there's one. And I'll say Y label. Oops, spell it right. So there's my Y label. Now let's go to the next plot. Subplot 3, 1, 2. Remember, three rows, one column, second plots, what that means. Plot. T, V, turn on the grid, and let's just stick the Y label on this line. There's that one. Go to the next plot. This will be subplot 313. So, three rows, one column, third plot. Okay, that looks right. Do I have the right number of spaces in there? Let's put that in. Oh, what did I do? Look at me. Boy, that looks better. See, you're not the only ones that make mistakes typing. And last thing. And there we go. And there's your motion diagram. 
So we've done the motion diagram a couple of different ways. We did it by hand on the board. We did it symbolically using MuPad inside MATLAB. And we did it numerically in MATLAB. So I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.